It is your girl, Latasha, and welcome to Latasha's Planted Kitchen. And you see the smile on my face when I say that? I'm happy because you guys are here joining me on this plant-based journey. For those that have the book, we're going to do some incredible things. We're going to make dinner, lunch, breakfast. We're going to have desserts. We're going to have conversation. I may even invite some of my celebrity friends or just some of my friends down the street. They love to eat, okay? But we'll do this together. A little singing, maybe. A little drinking. A little conversation. You can't go wrong with that. Today, I am excited. Hey! Because I am making my husband's favorite, favorite, favorite dish of all time, lasagna. And since it's Valentine's Day, I got roses, you guys. You see that? I got flowers. So I gotta do something nice for him. No problem, I do this all the time. I love singing. A lot of you guys know me from singing on the stage with my group. But right here, I'm having just as much fun as I am on the stage. I'm being creative in my own right, and I'm coming up with this, you did, you did? So let's get into this thing right now, this plant-based journey. Let's dive right in, you guys, I'm ready. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Let's see if y'all ready. When you're preparing your sauce for your lasagna, it's got to be right. You can't play around with this. So what I like to do is make mine with a little bit of Southwestern flair. So I make sure that I pour in my favorite spaghetti sauce. And then I go ahead and put my tomato paste in. I'll stir it a little bit. And to give it a little bit more kick, baby. You can't go wrong with the barbecue sauce. And this is what's gonna take it over the top. And my husband loves, loves, loves this stuff. So I gotta make it right as Valentine's Day. I gotta put a little extra love in there. Listen, you have to stir and let it simmer. Okay, so now after we have the sauce simmering, this is the time that we have to make sure we put the broccoli in. I like to use the crowns of the broccoli because they, they cook faster. And um, you don't have to really sort through too many of the stems, so. I'm gonna add a couple of these in and get it nice and um, not too soft because I like to make sure that the broccoli still has, you know, some nutrients in it. Some people like theirs to be, you know, soft, but it's fine. You don't have to have it soft like that. So now the broccoli is simmering. We're gonna make sure that that cooks for about three more minutes. And then we're gonna go over and go ahead and add our meat. You see that? Meatless vegan beef crumbles. The texture is just like meat for all those people who feel like, you know, they have to have that meat, that taste. You don't have to compromise it. I got y'all. But first of all, you know, I heard somebody tell me and, uh, that they would normally put the meat in the pan. And I'm like, you guys know that you have to put some type of oil in the pan before you put the meat in there. So I have about, I wanna say three or, it might be four, four tablespoons of coconut oil. And sometimes I kinda eyeball it a little bit and then if I need to take some out, I can. But no, that's perfect. Then I'm gonna incorporate the chopped onions that I chopped earlier, you guys saw me over here just slaving away. Going to town. You know, and if you're not an onion fan, if you don't really like onions that much, it's fine to leave them out altogether. You know, I love onions. It just adds a little bit more um, flavor to your food. You can use garlic if you don't like onions as well. I'm gonna stir that up until the onions are translucent. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add my beef crumbles. I'm gonna go ahead and put them all in there. and give that a stir. Now you see what I mean when I say that it's the same consistency as 
kind of like real meat. So, and it's okay not to tell people all the time, oh, I'm not cooking meat. You know, just cook it, you know, they'll, they'll try it. So this is gonna cook for about five minutes. We're gonna leave that alone and let it do what it does. The aroma is coming through this place. I got people salivating right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my taco seasoning. Really could have just poured it on there. This is about three tablespoons, you guys. And if you wanna use less, that's fine. And then you just, just stir, simple. Simple and easy. I told you guys earlier that when you're cooking, it doesn't have to be a whole lot. And a lot of people like to, you know, to like to be easy and breezy. People don't have time. It's gonna cook for about five minutes and we're right there at that point. You know, turn this off. The season is already throughout the meat. It's smelling good. Like I said, I wish you guys could smell this, but that's okay because you can cook it in your own home and then you guys can DM me and tell me how, how good it smells as I already know. Anyway, but here we go, you guys. This is done. We'll turn this off. And now we're gonna go to the noodles. Every good cook has to taste their food. And listen, I'm about to do that right now. Just to make sure. I don't wanna burn my tongue. A lot of times I see people, they be like, you know good and well that food is too hot. Mm, 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 mm. Woo! Mm. My mama told me not to talk with a mouth full of food, but this is this is so good, you guys. I'm not gonna put it back there. This is so good. I'm smacking. That's how good it is. I'm just so ready. So now I'm gonna go ahead and transfer the meat into the bacon dish. We're gonna get this party started, baby. We almost there. Listen, I almost forgot. Mm -mm, I can't forget this part. Cause this part right here is the secret ingredient. And I don't want y'all telling everybody, but I like to put the cheese in the meat and let it kind of ooze over and bubble over and all that good stuff. But shh, you're my little secret. Yep, that part. See what I'm doing? Pay close attention. And this is gonna, cause a lot of people think that the cheese, you know, doesn't melt well. This is how you do that. And I like to use cheddar and mozzarella cheese. Both of these add their own unique flavor. And this is about two cups of the cheddar and two cups of the mozzarella. It's gonna be nice and cheesy. And then I also like to shred a little bit of the cheese over in here as well because it melts just that much faster. And my family loves a lot of cheese anyway. And although it's not cheese, it's plant-based. So it's healthy for you. Yes, sir. You're gonna turn that, look at that. Nice and cheesy. Can we get some cheese? Yes, cheese. You're gonna let that bubble over and simmer for about another minute or so. Boom. And you got that ooey gooey goodness. Y'all know what it is. It's my secret in my kitchen. This is what I do, so. We're getting to the good part, yep. We're getting to the good part right now. We're about to do some layering. Do y'all know what that is? One step, two step, three step. Yeah, some of y'all know, some of y'all can't. Can y'all dance? Yeah, the one or two step. But this is like four or five steps right here. So right now, I have my bacon dish, as you guys can see. And what I'm gonna do is, you know that delicious sauce that we were talking about earlier? Let me go ahead and pour some of that at the bottom. And the reason that we do this is to allow the noodles not to stick, the lasagna noodles not to stick to the bottom of the uh, pan. 
So we're going to do it like this and make sure you spread it out evenly. Okay. And then we're going to start layering with the noodles. I'm going to move this to the side so I can get to my noodles a little quicker. And so let me show you guys a little trick that I do. You know, a lot of people want to know how many noodles go into the, you know, the casserole dish. So what I like to do is sometimes even before you cook it, you can kind of layer it in the pan to see what, you know, how many noodles you're going to need before you get started. So I've done that and um, I've layered it with some parchment paper because it's going to make it so much easier to be able to just take the noodle off, put it right in the pan like so. I told you guys it does not have to be hard to cook. I'm going to make it easy for you. Ain't that what Tina Turner used to say? Like it easy, I like Take it easy. But that's what we're doing tonight. So once you get the noodle, one of the first noodles layered, I'm gonna go ahead and take my vegan sour cream and I'm gonna layer it like this. And some of you guys were good, you know, back in the day when you were painting or, you know, using a crayon, some people color outside the lines. Listen, there's no perfect way to do anything. You just do it the way that you see fit. And so, I always stay inside the lines anyway, so. But today, I can do what I want to do because I'm creative in the kitchen. So I'm all over the place. You see this? And it's still going to come out good. I got people waiting on this lasagna. And then since it's Valentine's Day, I have to go ahead and make it right and put a lot of love in it. But I think I put a lot of love in all my food. I like to see the smiles on people's faces when they're eating the food and they're like, Tasha, this plant-based? I'm like, yeah, baby, it's plant-based, and it's good for you. So once you do this step here, I'm going to put a little bit more. And for those people that don't like sour cream, you can use um, maybe a vegan ace, and then you could put some spinach in it. You put it in a blender, and then you have almost like a ricotta cheese. And sometimes you could put a little bit of the, um, the firm soy. Put that in the blender as well. And I guarantee you, voila, it's gonna be a wonderful, wonderful dish. Okay, so now that I have the sour cream layered, I'm gonna go ahead and put, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and put the broccoli in first. And then I'm gonna layer with my meat. And then I'm gonna put a little bit more sauce. And we're gonna get this thing all the way together. Stay with me now. got this beautiful lasagna already layered up ready to go in the oven I'll put these gloves on real quick because you know one thing about these ovens they do not play with all this heat so the oven I've already preset to 400 degrees I'm gonna put this in for about 35 minutes on the middle rack and let it do what it do and voila the lasagna is ready. I've already taken it out of the oven and just look. I just wish that you guys could smell the aroma that is coming from this kitchen. It's so high, the meter is so high with this, the neighbors have already come over. So that means I'm gonna have to share a little bit. I know this is for my baby. It's Valentine's Day and it's his, his birthday. And it's Valentine's Day for me, but we're gonna share the love. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this before they come and dig in. Yeah, 
I'm gonna cut some nice big healthy pieces because they're probably gonna want to take something to go, especially Tony. He comes over here all unannounced, just pops up like he's done, but it's cool. That's what friends are for. And listen, when you want to kind of incorporate your vegetables and everything in one dish, this right here is a beautiful masterpiece. I told you guys that I love to sing, right? This is my next best thing in this cooking. And I'm still sharing the love. It ain't a song, but it's a beautiful masterpiece and everybody loves it. Get into it, y'all. The wait is over. Everybody over here is ready to eat. I'm not gonna prolong this anymore. This dish right here is this delicious dish. You guys have got to taste it. It's in my plant-based cookbook, Latasha's Planet Lifestyle. If you wanna get into it, get the book or subscribe, do both. I love y'all, happy Valentine's Day, right here in my kitchen, lasagna, yeah.